So welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number 39. Today is March the 16th, 2023. And the topic this evening is really about um, <clears throat> how to create re our own reality, like creation, manifestation, or some, some would call it manifestation. However, it's it's really about creating the experience that we want to have. And I've talked about this this um, process before. I believe an energy play shop 33, I talked about structure. So within the the structure talk, I, I also talked about you know how we can actually structure our reality in a way that is makes it easier for us to um create the experience that we desire. And I think 34 um energy play shop 34, I expanded on it as well. So I definitely have touched on this um topic of creating the reality that we desire before. And I think since um <clears throat> since that time, um it was maybe about six to eight weeks ago I talked about it. And six to eight weeks nowadays is like years. <laughs> so my own understanding has, has evolved a bit and I would like to um, revisit it again and just to talk about my own, um, like I would say better understanding of what that's all about. So that's the, that's why I want to do this topic this evening. And also to give uh, a break from all of that the um dimensional energy healing and all of that um not bec not that the the dimensional like healing with dimensional energy is is not important and is actually um i actually want to deliberately have a pause in between because to give everyone time to practice because healing being able to heal yourself and shift into a different set of energies is it's such a profound um method of healing it, it it's really profound and like no matter how profound it, it it may be however if you don't incorporate it if you don't use it then it does not matter it's as like the most um, the most magical thing in in the world if you don't use it it's, it's worthless it's nothing it's just it's just information it's when you incorporate in your life then it becomes wisdom a lived um wisdom that you can actually just whenever you feel something um going on with your own body you can actually access a quality of energy that is so much more advanced than um, than you normally have access to, just by shifting your own consciousness to a different dimension and and pulling the energy from that different dimension. So, I actually want to. Um, there's still more to 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 be uh, shared on those. However. I think it's a good um, idea to just stop with the what I've covered so far and give all of you time to actually, if it feels right for you to experiment and do more about um, you going to different dimensions and you know healing your own body and using those energy for your own benefit. So take this uh, or uh, like take this opportunity to practice those the what I've covered uh, last week and the week before about dimensional traveling to different dimensions and using those energies to heal yourself before I go on to give you even more um, information on them so so that's why uh, this is um, actually also I want to make sure that you all um, have the time to integrate and um, and practice using those before I 
throw more onto you. So we are going to talk about um, reality creation and experiencing different a different reality this time. And before I go do that, let's do our presence meditation. So let's just start by just taking in a deep breath. Just breathe in slowly and deeply. And let it all go slowly as well. Slowly breathe out. And then breathe in slowly and deeply again. And breathe out. And this time when you breathe out, just consciously let go of any tension that is in your body. And then breathe in again. And as you breathe out, consciously let go of any tension in your body from the top of your head all the way to the soles of your feet. Just allow yourself to relax. And continue to breathe in and out according to your own rhythm with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. And just take a few more breaths to allow your body to really come into a calmness. Come into relaxed mode. And as your body become relaxed, also allow your mind to become relaxed as well. Let go of all the thoughts, the chatters of your mind that is trying to get you to think of things that happened earlier in the day or the things that is going to happen at the end of this podcast. Just decide to be here in this moment with your body. And just be very good to your body and just spend time being present to your body. And as you become more present to what's happening inside your body, Set the intention to also call back all of your energies, all of your attention. Think of nothing except this moment and your body. We live in a society that is designed to distract you. But in this moment, let's do something that is completely against all of that. So just come back to yourself. Come back to your body. Come back to this moment. And allow yourself to be 100% conscious of everything that is happening inside your body. Be absolutely conscious of every thought that you think and choose the thoughts that really supports you in this moment. And whatever does not support you in this moment, just choose to let it go. And when you come all the way back into this moment, into your body, 
when you really feel your own attention and presence right here within you. And you feel that relaxation of knowing that in this moment, everything is okay, you're safe. And then come all the way back, open your eyes, take a deep breath. And welcome back, everybody. Thank you, Vinny. It was great. Yeah, it's good to um, just <laughs> let go of all the um, <clears throat> distractions. <laughs> it's been really interesting lately. <laughs> Not even a dull moment. <laughs> so many things to uh, keep us occupied. So <clears throat> I just want to, um, let me just see, um, talk about two things, actually. First, I just want to revisit. I, I, I remember I talked about thing, something called um power over others and power over self before a couple of weeks ago uh, maybe um, let's say six maybe four six weeks ago I, I, I mentioned that the <clears throat> the old paradigm is the power over other paradigm and we are going into the power over self we're going into that. So we're transitioning from power over others into the power over self paradigm. And some people call that the, the light dark paradigm into the light paradigm because we've been playing in um, light dark. So there's good, there's bad, and we don't always know what is good and what is bad, but um, that's that's the paradigm that we we've been living under for the longest time and that's what uh, most of us here um, on this uh, listening to this podcast has been raised on um most but not all I'm, I'm quite sure there are some people that happened upon this is um young enough to notice that uh, it's it's not as um it is not as light and dark as before that they they manage to still keep their remembrance of what light is because young the younger you are the 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 easier it is for you to remember that you actually our soul came from the light and we come into this this um we come we come onto earth this playground at a time when we are still playing with the darkness so it's a light dark I'm not saying that it's bad i'm just saying that it's an experience and so you come into this experience and um because you came from the light the younger you are the more you can recall what light actually is and um you may have yeah, you probably have been programmed. However, it's the younger you are, it's easier for you to let go of because you are let you are less entrenched in the the power over others. So some of the characteristics of power over others is that the more you um you seem to be thinking from the point uh, the the point of view of the ego the more it is you are playing in the power uh, over other paradigm and um the ego of course is a, a very ingenious program to to create a disconnection between ourselves and others so you are always 
be aware of this connection. So this connection and also because you're disconnected. So you, um, you feel less than, you feel lack. Somehow you don't have enough because from the ego's point of view, the, the, the disconnection um, automatically makes you less than and, and the, the paradigm of lack. And fear, of course, because you know, if you don't have enough or you um, believe that you don't have enough, then fear is always just right next to it. And and because of that, you will always want to, you know, what can I do? Action, action, action. Not, but this is not saying the action is bad, but that you, when you do something for the sake of doing something, and then action for action's sake, uh, sake uh, that is a different kind of um, motivation. So that that's kind of like running in a, and a hamster's wheel. It, you are doing, doing, but it gets you nowhere. So <clears throat> it's that kind of action. So if you, if all of this feels familiar, then you know, okay, this is, this is experience of power over others. Because you're always trying to control others in order to make your ego, the disconnected self, feel safe. So lack, lack of safety, all of that goes with it. And what about the, so what are the characteristics of power over self? So um, <clears throat> power over self is you, you start to understand that you are part of one. You don't feel that disconnection as much. I'm not saying that you don't feel it at all, but not as much. You understand that even though your body is separate from others, but you feel that connectedness. You feel that. You feel that that person out there, um, they may be seeing no matter what it is that they're doing, they are just a different expression of oneness. So you have that inner knowing um, that even though the other person may be annoying you, however, the way you respond, you respond in a way knowing that they are just part of you. So you won't try to um, <clears throat> annihilate them. You just know that, okay, so they are, they're thinking like that. I don't agree with them, but I don't have to squash them. I just have to walk away. <laughs> That's all I need to do. Or I may want to do a little bit more than um, just walking away. I may want to, you know, just have a discussion with them, and let them know that there are different ways of looking at something, uh, that there is a different way of looking at reality is this it's not just one point of view they're actually different point of view and, and you just talk to them to let them know your point of view which may be different from them but you are not trying to tell them to convince them you're just trying to tell them to so that um, you express yourself and you exchange opinion and you hear them out as well, because they may know something or they may have a, um, a point of view that has validity. So you, um, unless you hear them out, unless you know where they're coming from, you, you wouldn't know. So there is that real exchange of ideas rather than trying to you know, convince them, okay, my way is the right way because I've been living this long and it's worked for me, so it has to be right. So you must be wrong. No, that's not that's not it. There's more than one right way. So there is a lot more exchange of ideas and and with this exchange of ideas, it's actually 
<clears throat> the the sum total can be um, better and bigger than uh, or, or this com combination can be bigger than the sum total. So, and also in power over self is not about having things. It's not about you gotta have this house. You know, mm -hmm. That's why I'm good. That's why I'm I'm important. No, you don't need that big house. And like it's it's you you it's the beingness. It's your identity of who you are that actually um, determines your self worth, rather than you know the size of your house or the size of your bank account and and all that. I mean, it's nice to have a big house, nice to have um, a, a big bank account, but it's not a, a, a necessity. So, and also you become more, you feel more neutral. You feel, you don't have that, okay, I am right, so they have to be wrong. So it, it's not that, you know, black, white kind of mentality. You... You know what works, but that does not mean that um, there's only one way. So you are more neutral. And that is um, also another characteristics of power over self. And I want to add in one more thing as well. Um, power over self. Like when you... Uh, when you really know and trust yourself, when you really know and trust that um, oneness is the truth rather than this connection is the truth, when you know that we are all actually here playing together and we are creating together a, a reality that we all want to experience when you have that um the word on that that comes to me is grace you actually feel grace it's it is like it's a joy of being the joy of being it's it's grace the that is not um, tied to what you have. It's not even tied to who you think you are, but it's really a, I think the best word to, to um, or the best description I can think about is really your, your frequency. You're your own unique soul frequency. When you are getting in, getting in tune with that, then um, the world has no other choice but to reflect that back to you. When you are acting as your own unique soul frequency, that. Um, congruence that 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 integrity will make it impossible for the universe to give you something um that is going to throw you off your game because it can't <laughs> because you no matter what the universe throws at you that your own unique frequency is going to um, make all of those inconsequential. Whatever your, whatever you may be, seem to be experiencing from another person's point of view, from your own point of view, all you can see or all you can um, experience is really grace. So that's that's something that um, is what maybe we're not there yet because um, <clears throat> however, I think I, I 
absolutely believe that that's all we are all going to get there someday. Um, to get to be so in sync with our own unique soul frequency that the world outside outside may be um, absolutely chaos, but within it, it's it's like you're in the eye of the storm, like nothing can touch you. Outside is maybe chaos. That you know, it's a cyclone going on outside. But when you're in your own frequency, your own unique soul frequency. It's just, it's beautiful when you're there, when you're inside and you will be able to look out with um, absolute surety that it's all happening perfectly. So for me, that's, that's what grace truly is. <clears throat> So um, <laughs> any questions so far before I, I go on to to talk about? What, what came to me when you when you said sort of around the neutral idea, mm -hmm. um, like neither accepting nor rejecting. Neither accepting nor rejecting. I've heard that somewhere and it kind of resonated with me. Okay, great. Yeah. And so is this is this sort of the idea this this grace that um you're in your own sort of bubble and that maybe even people will not be able to see you you're kind of going to be invisible um the people that are not that you don't want to interact with yeah they you kind of they, they can't even they can't even see you or find you to interact with you yeah. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that just amazing? <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I am. Yeah. It's, it's really great to get to there and uh, I'm not there yet. So. <laughs> no, me neither. But, me neither. But it's, it, it's got real potential. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Absolutely. Thank you for your comment. And if nothing else, then I'm I'm gonna actually just go straight into talking about how to um, create. So creation. No. Well, so let's get right into creation. So in the the power over others, creation is really about. Um, you know, how should I say it? Like all of the things, it's like the, the law of attraction and all that is actually power over others um, in a way. The, the way that we've been using it is it's really power over others. Um, even though the law of attraction itself is not in itself a power over others, but the way that we've been applying it is because we we okay if we want to attract then we have to do all of this and all of this to attract something in so when you are um using from your egoic point of view you want something and so you're doing all you can to attract in that is actually a power over others it's just that you're using something that is called the law of attraction for the power over other paradigm, whereas the, the the real law of attraction is you don't do anything. You're just being who you are. And just by being who you are, you will attract whatever it is um, that is going to support you in to, um, having the, that experience. The, ex the external environment is going to reflect to you what's within that's that's really what the law of attraction is about it's not about you know i have to um you know eat eat vegetables only or do meditation or chant or you know do sun gazing all those in order to 
attract this thing to me. No, <laughs> no, not really. It's that's actually just using the law of attraction from the point of um, power over others. So how do we actually create from um, power over self? So I actually just want to go over. Um, so let's let me just actually pull up. Um, I think it is Energy Play Shop. 33, so, uh, I, okay, I'm going to um, share screen. This is what I have from, oops, from, um, so, okay, so this is what I have in the um, <clears throat> energy play shop number 33. So in it, this is, this is one of the, 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 the process is so connect with your creator identity or your true self. So it's about, it's, it's really about getting yourself out. The, the, the reason why I, I put this first is really get yourself out of your egoic mode, your egoic ID. So when you connect with your creator ID, with your tr true self, then you are, um, less like your egoic self so when you're in this then you choose to experience or create whatever it is that you want to experience and then you notice all the thought patterns that comes up any um, beliefs fear all of those things and you um, then connect with the highest frequency version of yourself and you and this, that assistance to help you release all of those thought patterns. And then you take action towards your desired experience. So this is, this uh, was what I went over um, maybe about six to eight weeks ago. So the, I would say the more update version now is, oh, okay, hang on. <clears throat> Let me just get to this one. So this is uh, the process for the the new understanding that I have. Um, it's a, a subtle um, change. However, I, I, I there is a change. So um, I realize that it may not be easy for for some people to connect with their true self because it really takes a lot of effort to um, get to the point where you can even know what your true self is and and for for some people that it it may be too daunting a a journey to you know get to know your true self first and then you can start to create um it, it may not be the easiest so that's why i want to propose this is is that um anyone can start that today is to use the the power over self method of creating the reality that you want so you just write out what it is that you want you don't need to uh, censure yourself. You just need, for example, um, what is one thing that I want? Uh, let's say <clears throat> I want to have pie tomorrow. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, let me, or, or a lemon meringue pie. Let's let's say. So that's that's what I want to experience tomorrow. For example, so I want I I write out. Guess what it is that I want to experience tomorrow. And then, um, so I don't need to shift into my true self and then check in, you know, my true self, do I, does my true self really want lemon meringue pie? You know, who cares? No, just write out what it is that you want. And then you start to, <clears throat> and then once you've write out 
what you want, then um, stuff is going to start coming up. For example, first thought that came out of my my um, mind when I said I want lemon meringue pie tomorrow is, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's a lot of calories. I may have to do a lot of walking around high park in order to get rid of that. Like what kind, like what kind of, um, you know, what kind of sugar should I make it myself or should I go out and buy it? Because, and, and if I buy it and can I trust the, the, the people that are making it to make it to be, you know, something that is delicious. I, I don't want it to be too sweet. And also I don't want to take, uh, eat too much sugar. There is all this whole beliefs, disbeliefs, and also, you know, a, a part of me is screaming, are you crazy? <laughs> <clears throat> Have pie, you know, um, that that is just sugar death. Like, that's the sugary death. So you're going to um, get diabetes if you, if you do this. So like all of these beliefs is going to, you know, trust me, it will come up. Whenever you write a goal, whenever you write out what it is that you want, all of the um, beliefs, all of the other, all of the, <clears throat> I would say, all of the, the conversations, thought forms in your mind that does not align with you having that experience will come up so so when you realize all of those um, beliefs that does not support you having that experience coming up just write it all down write all the be beliefs that you have about you know eating too much is you're gonna get fat and if you get fat you're not attractive you don't look good you're gonna age whatever reasons that come up and then you also have to process all, uh, write out all the disbeliefs, you know, you know, how am I going to get a, a, a lemon meringue pie? There is no pie shop around here that is really good. So all the disbeliefs that, you know, you can actually make that come true. Um, so that is all going to come up as well. So write all of those down and then you can have judgments about, you know, eating a pie. And then you're going to have, you know, um, fear of change. I mean, if I start eating like that, fear of change, fear of, um, and then there will be fire, so fear coming up, all sorts of fears coming up. Um, and so write all of those down. Whatever the beliefs, disbeliefs, judgment, fear of change, um, negative emotions that's coming up, write all of those down and start to process them. And um, process. <clears throat> I, might, I might have talked about what process really is for me before, but I, I really think that it is worth repeating again. When you process something, um, what is processing is really to let <clears throat> the emotions, to let the belief, so the, um, to be fully expressed. That's what I mean by process. So let's say the, the belief that, you know, I'm going to get diabetes if I have um, a lemon meringue pie. So that... So that, that thought comes to mind. If I don't watch what I'm eating, if I eat something like that, and I'm going to get diabetes. So that fear. So just allow yourself to stay on that conversation and not try to censure, censure yourself. Just keep on thinking, okay, I'm going to have diabetes. And what does diabetes mean? <clears throat> and how is that going to impact my life from now on? So allow yourself to really let all the conversations about diabetes and how 
eating sugary things is going to um, make you more prone to or the belief that you know this is what is going to happen. So let all of those conversations come up without trying to push it down, without trying to um, not look at them. It's, it's actually, it's not looking at them, but it's actually allowing all of those conversations to come up. And um, <clears throat> when you allow something to come up and <clears throat> fully express that all that 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 belief, be fully expressed, so that you can hear out all the points of view of because it's <clears throat> when you have a certain belief, it is really a part of you that have that certain belief. <clears throat> so. Um, it's like you trying to stay in neutral and uh, and have that conversation with another part of yourself that is all twisted up about um, diabetes. So you are just allowing that part of yourself to give you all the reasons, all of their, um, bring up all of the fear, all of that thought form so that's what process is is to allow all that conversation to come up so that there is nothing that is left unsaid and when you allow enough um, time for that part of you to express all the concerns come up come up come up come up and at some point um you will find that that energy will start to dissipate because that is when you have something, uh, a, a different point of view and you don't listen to it fully, it will always be there, that, that different point of view. But if, when you allow that point of view to fully express until um, it has no nothing more to add to it, then at that point you can start to um, <clears throat> decide. Is that true? Is that what you actually resonate with? And if it is true, then you should definitely take that into consideration and change what it is that you want to experience. Because if you actually want to experience having diabetes, then sure, go ahead. Go ahead and um, have that piece of pie. Test as much pie as often as you want, because you know what's gonna happen and you you still choose that. Then it is a an informed choice. So that's what process really is, is to allow the conversation to absolutely be fully expressed until there's no nothing left unsaid. And then you can decide when you're in neutrality. You can decide, hey, oh, okay, this is, this is what all of that, am I up for that? Or you may decide that, okay, well, you know, Yes, um, you agree to some of it, but not all of it. Then you adjust your own, um, you adjust it to whatever it is that you want to experience. So that's what, for me, process is, is to hear that disagreed, um, that, that part of you that does not allow you to have that experience to be fully hurt all all the, the 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 emotions all the arguments you hear them out and then you sort through what it is that resonates with you what it is that you actually want to sign up to experience so that's what process is so at some point you would have sought out all of that 
to the point where you you either have um, shifted your what it is that you want to to have. Maybe I don't want to have the whole um, lemon meringue pie. I just want to have a small piece, and and I just want to have it for that one day. It's not like something that I want to experience um, every day or every week even. So you adjust what it is that you sign up to experience. And then furthermore, you the next round of processing is you process all the attachments on how you think you can create that experience for yourself. Because um, like even for the, the example of a meringue pie, I can make it myself. Then I can control exactly what kind of sugar I put in it, how much butter I use or what kind of flour I use to make the, 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 the pie crust, all of that I can. Or if I know exactly a, um, a place that sells the best lemon meringue pie, then that's how I create it. I, that's how I, I can go and create that experience for myself. But um, I don't try to create with just one way of creating it is I only want to um, make it myself so I have full control or I only want to buy it from that store because um, you never know how that, how you can create that reality because um, when you create a reality, you're not just creating it with yourself. You are creating it with the universe. So you never know how the universe is going to bring it to you. You can have all the intention in the world to, you know, go out and buy that pie. However, you know, that, that restaurant that you, or that shop, that pie shop that you have singled out, it may be out of pie, out of lemon meringue pie that morning or that afternoon and when you go in there. So when you're trying to create, you have to let go of any attachments to how the universe is going to deliver that um, experience to you. So so process, letting go of any attachments. So I don't care how it is, how I'm going to get that pie. I don't care. Um, <clears throat> and, and you let go of any limiting parameters. So um, limiting parameters may be that, you know, that... Um, I only want to have this pie to be made with honey. I don't want it to be any other uh, types of sugar because I, from my research, honey is the best. So that would be kind of a limiting uh, parameters. But if I make it to be something that is healthy and, and support, it, support my body, then the universe would be able to figure out a way to give you uh, the experience that you want co-creating maybe somebody that you know of um <clears throat> decide to call you up and let you invite you over for a tea and they make you lemon meringue pie and they are you know a really good and, and ethical cook so if you only allow it to be a pie that you make yourself with certain ingredients, then you're actually limiting how you can experience that. So that's just <clears throat> using the, the, the analogy of a pie to illustrate. And when you think of it as like, okay, I want money. I want to have you know a certain amount of money, but if you only allow it to be something that you know I earn myself, 
or um, from uh, winning a lottery, like if those are the only options, then you're actually limiting how the universe can give you the experience of, uh, let's say, owning um, an extra $50,000, something like that. So process all your attachments mm -hmm. to as to how you can co-create that experience for yourself. So let go of all of that. And I remember um, very clearly when I have um, my own career goals is I I want to have, you know, as to be able to reach, you know, a thousand people through my YouTube. However, I, I actually have the um, a, a, a belief that, you know, nobody wants to be, um, nobody is really interested in spirituality. You know, most people, like if, if you, if I put out a video about um, dogs chasing cats, I'm sure there's no problem I can get a million views easily. It's not even not even um, too much of a challenge, but to put out a, um, a a video on spirituality and have even 500 people look at it may be a challenge. So I actually have that had that belief. So <clears throat> that's why when I um, really start to to look at my own beliefs and how that's not matching up with. Um, some of the, the 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 goals that I set up for myself, I and I start to process that. That's when I start to see different results coming um, coming up. So it's it's really important to look at all of your own beliefs, all of your attachments to how you can create that reality for yourself. And when you have processed all of that, then um, that's, you are, you're halfway there, but not all the way there yet. <clears throat> so you have to know that when you, in your mind, you would know you have processed all of that, is that when in your mind, and also you can feel it in your body as well, that when you think of the goal that you want, so going back to my example here, here is you know wanting to have a slice of you know lemon meringue pie, for example. When I think of that, having that, you know you have processed all everything is when you um scan your own body when you just internally check in when you think of that experience you have no no part of you is <clears throat> is um, having a second opinion there's no second opinion at all that you're completely aligned to have that And then when you get to that point, then um, it's only a matter of, um, so when you get to that point, then the next step is to really live in the energy that you have that experience, that that is real for you. And then you, and then the next step after that is and then I plan my day and I live in that day, that I live my day in that experience. So what does that mean? That means that um, I would start to, to research, you know, where are the pie shops around me? Or if I, um, and if I don't see any pie shops around me, then I would start to, you know, go and find out, okay, um, videos on how to make a lemon meringue pie and then I would start to research 
um, the, the best ingredients, the best method of making that. And then I would, you know, so, so those are the actions that I would take when I know for sure that that is the experience that I am going to have. So that is really how um, you can, we can each create the experience that we want in the power over self paradigm. So that's me talking a lot. Um, any um, questions, comments? Pizer may be easy, but some of the other stuff is a little harder. <laughs> I just want to. Um, <clears throat> no, actually. Um, yes and no. Creation is a muscle. Creation is a muscle. And the um, some of the other things, it may be harder. Yes. However, it's hard only because we are not confident as a creator yet. When you become, when you really practice that, when you start to do that, you start with the small things. Like, don't start with $50,000. Start with $100 or $50 if, if you want to have financial abundance, for example. Start with just creating $50. <clears throat> and um, I can give you an example is, is that, you know, yes, who, who amongst us does not want financial security? However, if you really tune into yourself, or, or, or I should say, I, when I actually tune into myself, I actually found that I have this block about people giving me money a guy it's like oh people giving me money what am I going to do I have this you know I don't know what to do <laughs> so that is um so when I really look at it if I have that energy within me do you think people are going to give me any money no because that's a block that's an energetic block. So I really have to sit down and um, did work. I, I really did work on processing and letting go of that. Okay, what I'm going to do if people give me money, I feel so undeserving of that. Is is all of that. Like When I process through that, it actually start to allow more people giving me money. And it, it was... Um, really funny <laughs> to go through that journey is like like I, I've been trying to um you know work with my own financial story for such a long time but I never quite notice how like and whenever people give me money I have this cringe cringe um I would say reaction so it's when I actually look into what's behind that and start to um, process all of that. That's when um, the feel starts to clear. And that's when actually the more um, people start to give me money. So am I going to get to the point where somebody would give me $50,000? I'm open to that. <laughs> <laughs> so one day it's it's really start small start with a hundred dollars and get comfortable with random strangers giving you a hundred dollars and then when you get comfortable with that you don't try to say okay why is that person give me money what do they want can I afford to take this money? When you process all of those things, <clears throat> then um, the energetic block is no longer there. It actually makes it easier for somebody to come along and give you $50,000 or whatever amount. 
or even fifty million dollars. So that's. However, the uh, the process of getting a hundred dollars is really the same as getting a uh, hundred million. The only difference is in our mind, it's a bigger figure. We think that it's going to be a lot more um, difficult and impossible. But when you really process the fact that, you know, this is all an illusion anyways, we think that there is an earth. The earth is not what we think it is. Reality is not what we think it, it is. There is actually nothing that prevents us from creating a reality where somebody will just give us a hundred million. The only block is our own mind. We don't believe that, you know, there are people running around giving out a hundred million dollars. We don't see that, but actually it does happen. So, <laughs> Any other, so you're all clear on what to do in terms of creating your own reality? Yeah, something, if it's personal, don't have to reply. When you decided how to do this podcast, did you have to go through all this? Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's, um, I'm yeah. talking about the um, my own from my own experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, so that's why you don't charge, like specifically, for your service. Um. Okay. You have to understand that the money that. If I charge money, mm -hmm. then I am creating a different paradigm. So if I only allow myself to make money from this podcast, then um, I can do that. However, um, the, the energy exchange is different. And it so is, did, yeah. I'm just saying that. Did you consider that also when you were going through the process? Yeah, no, mm -hmm. so then you come to the decision that that doesn't work for you or something. Yeah, I want this to. be um, out there for everyone. It does not matter whether um, they have money or don't have money. Yeah. I, I want this out there. So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. So, go ahead. First of all, you have to work to get rid of that I do not deserve to receive money or what? If that conversation comes up, like when you put a go down, when you put whatever it is that you want to experience, whatever you want to create, when you put that down, if that conversation comes up, then yes, you have to process that. It may or may not come up though. So when, so what should I do if, you know, no conversation coming up? I, I just like, for example, um, want to have more clients. I have no, I just have to, um, ask to to bring me people for who I I can help 
or I can sort better. Who needs me more? What should I do? Um, nothing of that. So just write out what you want. Very plain. You want more clients, so be specific. How many more clients? And then once you write out what it is that you want to experience, then conversations will start to come up in your mind. It could be that, oh, if I have to do this, then... <clears throat> the conversations will start to come up. So write out all the conversations that comes up. So those would be the within yourself. Those would be your own energy blocks that is, does not align with you to have that experience. So that's what you want to to find out all the misaligned platforms that you have. And um, when I gonna find out that form, I just have to, um, you know, pay attention on this and just um, find out in my body where I have that emotion or something and then let it go or how I should get rid of it. Um, just usually when you, when you put a, a stick on the ground, then that's when all the, the, the thought forms that does not align will come up. So that's why the first thing is to just write it all out. Because the thing is, um, if you don't write it down, you tend to forget You tend to forget. And the more you are not aligned, the more you tend to forget. Because somehow you you don't even want yourself to process it because you're not aligned. So that's why as soon as a thought comes, as soon as you realize something is, is not aligned within you, you write it down first. And you after you've written down everything, then you then you go back to process it because if you start processing you process one one thought but you've forgotten 10 other thoughts that's that's not aligned so you just write it all out first and then you go over and whenever something new comes up then you start to process it you write it down so you don't forget But how I gonna process it? I just gonna pay attention. Where is it in my body, and then let it go. I I already mentioned is when so you just focus on one thought. Let's say you don't deserve, for example, um, so so just that you focus on that one thought and just say, okay, I'm just gonna spend time with the not deserving thought. And then when you spend time with that, then all of the um, these other thought forms that is associated with not deserving will start to come up. And you just allow those to come up. So you may feel an emotion. You may feel a certain part of your body is kind of acting up and may give you some pain. So whatever it is that comes up and when as you are focusing on that one thought, then you you notice those. And just allow all of that conversation that's underneath to come up. Is that is that clearer? Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. Vinny, yes. so supposing like uh, taking Tatiana's example, like she wants more clients, uh, and then would you question 
whether you have the energy to even serve those clients because it's not just about the money, right? It's so that that's where you mean you are processing. You write down all those things, like yeah. If those, if that, you know, you do, you don't have enough energy. If that comes up, you you start to process all that as well. So then it has to have some kind of probability, right? Um, like that you should have that energy or you should have to do something. You should be willing to do something to get that goal. When you have processed all of that. And so the important thing is you have to, when you process all of that, when you allow, when you've listened to all of the, the conversations and you allow it to be fully expressed, then yeah, I'm saying you have to, to put these things into the conversation, like yeah, the yeah. points. Yeah. You have to these are all the points you would have to cover. That's yeah. What I'm saying. Yeah. These would all have to cover. So you have to be practical, like to think like that. Let's say, for instance, if I want to go and live in London, I have to think about what I'm going to do with all my possessions here. Will I be taking stuff? Or will I be leaving stuff? Uh, do I first go and find the place? All that. So it's a long thing. Like you have to like go through that. Yeah. So it, so it could take a while, months, or it could be just. It could take a while. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, and it really depends on how um, it's definitely processing is not something that you can do in one sit sitting. Yeah. May take you a month mm. or longer. So it takes as long as it takes. Yeah. However, the more you process, though, you will start to, like, things will start to shift. Okay. But when but, you process it, you have to be in meditation state. Not necessarily. You just have to spend time. Like, you, it's, it's not something that you can do, you know, in the middle of um other things happening. So I would say that you have to be in quiet, like somewhere that you can be able to uh, focus on your own thoughts, but not necessarily needing, meaning that you have to be in a meditative state. You just have to be quiet to hear, to, to be able to con become conscious of what are the conversations that's coming up. So it can happen even any time during the day like that. Even though you may not be thinking about it, sometimes a thought might come. Yep. You may be washing dishes. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, could it also change the whole thing? Like like going back to your meringue pie, could it also say that, okay, you decide you don't want the meringue pie anymore? Yeah, that could that could happen too. Right? It can happen too, because when all the when you listen to all the conversations, mm -hmm. you may decide, ah, okay, maybe I'll just have an apple. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, the the most important thing though is after you've processed everything, if you and you've come up with what it is that you really want to experience, then you have to actually be in the energy of experiencing it. So you, so when you take action, you're taking action as though you are already experiencing it. So oh. those action would be very different from um you know trying to make it happen because when you're actually in the energy of 
and so it's it's more about being so in your being you're already experiencing it the so when you are already in that um in the being within your being you already have that experience around you the actions that you would take would be very different from when you are outside of that experience and you are just trying to do something in order to make it happen it's it's different so it's like you have to believe that it has happened like yeah. 100% yeah yeah and i can give an example of that is i i mentioned i think last week or a couple of weeks ago that i want to actually start to write a book yeah and, you know, I've been trying to do that for the longest time, but <clears throat> I find it so very hard to discipline myself to sit down and actually write. Mm -hmm. However, I, I think I've um, really processed enough of the, the um, my own internal discord about writing that actually what came up to me is... Um, I actually go look for their meetups for people to write together. So uh, so I actually joined a meetup where um, like Saturday morning, we all come together and we do an hour and a half of just writing. So we're not even talking together. So we just all showed up, say hi and what we are doing today. And then, and then the, the organizer would just time us so 30 minutes each. So like we have 30 minutes writing, 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 and then we have five minute break and then another 30 minutes and then another. So we actually, you know, I actually found a, a meetup to help me do that. Wow. So and I actually that found me. that it was, I, I was able to concentrate and, and uh, do that. So that, that was like, you know, when I actually decide that I want, I really want to write it, things yeah, would have yeah. to line up yeah. to help me write it. Yeah. Everything lines up, yeah. Yeah. Whereas before, it never even crossed my mind that, you know, I can sign up for a group, a Zoom meeting to write. It, it never even crossed my mind. Oh, you just do it by Zoom? Yep, you don't just even have to go some... anywhere. Wow. Yep, oh. don't even have to go anywhere. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you, you, um, like when you are not aligned, then these things does not you, you don't even these thoughts does not even come to you. But when you are actually aligned, then um, the universe will just bring opportunities to assist you, because mm -hmm. that's what creation is. It's not just you doing brunch work. It's actually the uni the whole universe conspire to give you what you want. Right. That is good. And that's the process. It's, it's simple. That does not mean it's easy. However, it's simple. Just follow the steps and do the work. And um, so start by something small and then this is this is something that is a, a creation is a muscle the more you use it the easier it is so you don't like what the government is doing and there's so much block that we think oh the government is bigger than us blah 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 no <laughs> if you actually look the government can say what it says. However, when um, the community come together and say, no, doesn't matter what the government wants, it will have to back down. So that actually we have the power to do that. It's just that, you know, we've been so conditioned to believe that the government is bigger than us. We are so small. We can't do anything. That in itself is 
a very ingrained program. So um, definitely exercise the muscle to process that program. So there are people who are doing it uh, and I, I applaud them, but I don't want to be um, taking part of it because uh, it does not interest me. If it does not interest you, it does not interest you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I do appreciate that there are people who are doing it and I do wish them all the best. And I know that in the end, it is going to help all of us. Mm -hmm. That's why we we are, um, as Jason says, we are team humanity. So we each yeah. do our part. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. However, you still have to do your part. <laughs> doesn't mean doesn't mean you can just eat pie. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. We we you st we still have to really um step up to what it is that we want to experience and take steps to create what we want to experience. Yeah, you know, like I do the all the change dot org uh, petitions, and I do write a little blurb every time. Yeah. And I get acknowledgement for that too. <laughs> they, so they do your part. Like that. Yeah. So I feel like I will do something that will interest me. Like, and there are many topics of theirs which don't interest me. I won't take part in it. Because I want to feel when I'm doing something that I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Sound easy, but let, let me try <laughs> to do that. <laughs> yes, please do so. Let us know. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Shall we do our meditation then? Yes, please.